with me is Jim. <laughs> but we do have Keith here. Um, Jim is going to call in and do a sponsor because I don't know the Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having to run back and forth. <laughs> we're winning today. Yeah, today we're totally winging it. My name is Keith Much, and uh, I'm uh, sitting in here, unfortunately, for Jim, who's uh, who's not feeling well, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to another quick video here. Today's uh, Project Arrowhead is brought to you by the Lansdowne Pub, located inside the wonderful Mohegan Sun. For all your nighttime needs, entertainment, food, head on down to the Lansdowne Pub inside the Mohegan Sun Casino. And in there you will have the best nightlife experience that you could possibly ever have. And as you can see here in the video, these people are having a grand old time. Can't hear Sarah. Great. Gonna have to fix it. <laughs> Anyhow. Lansdowne Pub inside the Mohegan Sun for all your nighttime needs and necessities. And back to back to us. Uh, go ahead and say something first. Can you guys hear me? No, I can't hear you. Okay, let me know when you can hear yourself. Can you guys? Oh, I can hear myself now. Back in the game. So if you miss me, we're 100% winging the show today. Jim's sick. We hope he feels better. He is going to call in. So today, did you do any research? Not really. <laughs> today, we are talking about, um, I don't even know what the right word to call it is, like a ghost town, abandoned towns, uh, just towns that... Are abandoned. I don't know. Um, Isn't that most of Connecticut? <laughs> they're getting well, out of here. Except for Colchester. Colchester here is hopping pretty well. Yeah, because, you know. You got, uh, is Harry's Shack still out there? Heck yeah. That place, that, there's a place called Harry's Shack in Colchester. I think it's just Harry's. Harry's. <laughs> it is a shack. Oh, it's a shack. <laughs> they make some of the best hamburgers. And this is not a sponsor of the show, by the way. Uh, this Harry Shack out in Col Harry Shack, Harry's out in Colchester. Uh, it's just prior to Troop uh, K. Yep. Um, and they make some of the best tasting hamburgers and fries you will ever have. I mean, Hi, Ashley. Hi, Rebel. Sorry. Absolutely incredible food. But as you were saying, I'm um, sorry. I didn't speaking mean to of them, they. Um, and I don't know if they still do, but they used to get their meat from Noel's, Noel's Market. Yep. Sorry, I speak as if like you all know what this place is. Well, I grew up in that area. So. Um, but I used to work at Noel's. So, um, anyways, no, Culture Center is not abandoned, but we do have a couple local ones in Connecticut and at least two that are nearby in Connecticut. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know, I don't want to hear myself talk for an hour and a half. <laughs> so if you guys want to join in on the conversation, type in the live. I'm watching the chat. I'm probably like 15 seconds behind you. But um, I'll connect that way. And if you want to call in, I believe we have a caller now. So we're gonna we're gonna get on that in a second, but um, Ashley, yes, Harry's is amazing. Yes, Harry's is absolutely awesome. Oh, hey, Jim. Hey, what's up, Pete? How you doing? Oh man, thrilled you called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep us stumbling all over that. Uh, yeah, if you want to do a proper um, sponsor. Go ahead, because we want to make sure that... I tried. Project Arrowhead, is, Project Arrowhead is brought to you by the Lansdowne Pub, the number one nightlife spot in the Mohegan Sun Casino. Great food, daily specials, great music. The Lansdowne Pub, the only place to be at the Mohegan Sun. Wow. Okay. 
That was great. Oh, I thought you read a script. <laughs> I tried, Jim. I tried. I promise you, I tried. That was a good yeah, effort. The wonderful movie. <laughs> I ch- don't make me laugh because it hurts to laugh. This is all I've had for coffee. I mean, I'm horrible. And look, my, cu- my cup you is can't empty. Show me anything. It's empty. Well, you can't show me anything because you're on a delay. You'll see the cup in a minute. It's empty. There's no coffee in there. I gotta go make more. That was my bad. I didn't stop. Because just like Jim, I mean, actually, I don't know what you're sick with, but last week I was sick with neurovirus. And ever since being sick with that, I've been drinking less coffee and more water and Gatorade and ginger ale, even though I'm better now. Oh, my God. Whew. I'm on bottle number eight of water in the last, so I would say, hour. Wow. Wow. Do you do you think you have, like, the stomach bug, too? Oh, it's definitely a stomach bug, yeah. It, oh. it actually... It hit me Thursday night, and I just thought I ate something bad, and then it just progressively got worse. Yikes! You don't sound okay. I can see the. You don't sound sick to me. I can see the empty cup. <laughs> I can see the empty cup now, Keith. Well, it's a nice solid delay there. Yeah. Well. This... <laughs> right. Well, look at the carrier he's on. He's got a Stone Age carrier, and he's got an iPhone. I mean, of all things. Hey. Don't Stone Age Carrier. I'm on Verizon, brother. Heck Verizon, yeah. nickel and dime you to death. They, you know, they do, but I get you impeccable get service. So I ain't mad about it. I get, I have Sprint, and I get incredible service. And Sprint and uh, T-Mobile are going to merge and mop the floor with all these uh-uh. other carriers. Let me tell you. I yeah, will okay. tell you my T-Mobile story before we begin this show. We, I was originally on my dad's plan. Um... And he wanted to switch to T-Mobile because he, his service with Brantford is, you know, average. So he was like, I'm going to switch to T-Mobile, see if I get service here. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper. And it really was. Um, so I was like, you know what? I don't want to switch, but let me try it out. So, because I, I want to pay literally, it was like a quarter of the price. Wow. So... Um, and they, tra- if as long as I traded in my phone, I got um, a newer version of the iPhone, and I had no payments on the phone, so I had a free phone. So I switched, and immediately I just had no service, and I was like, "Great, Colchester, I'm in the boonies." Didn't have service in Lebanon, Hebron, Colchester, wow. Marlboro, East Hampton. Not, no, none of these places I had service. So I went back and I'm like, this is happening. He was like, we're going to send you a booster. Or I don't know what it's actually called. But um, they sent this like, it almost looked like a Wi-Fi box. but Which essentially I guess it was, but for service. I'm not technical, guys. I don't know this stuff. But I put one in, in one room of my house and one on the opposite and yes, it gave me a bar or two more at my house, but it did not work while I was driving. And I babysit a lot, guys, so I can't be at someone's house and not be able to call 911. God forbid something happens. So Absolutely. after two weeks, I I switched back. I, t- I went off T-Mobile, and I just opened up my own Verizon account just to get back my service. I missed it. You going to be okay for the next few minutes? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, I'm going to go get a refill. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not talking about cell phones or anything, but before we, before you go on with the haunted <laughs> cities and abandoned cities, um, how about that wreck yesterday? Oh, my gosh. I was going to bring that up, too. That I, I looked. I didn't watch it. But I watched a video of it pretty much very like pretty soon after it happened, and the it kind of happened so fast. And the video I was watching broke it down, and what a miracle that he's alive! That's crazy. Uh, the latest update, which just came in a few minutes ago, is he is now conscious and talking to his family. What a miracle! That is crazy. That was hands down one of the worst wrecks I have ever, ever seen. And for those and, uh, who didn't see it, I, I've, I've kind of like broke it down where basically 
he crashed into the wall, bounced up. And first. Yeah, bounced up, and while he was rolling, a car behind him going out over 200 miles an hour, or about that, doesn't matter. Two hundred fast. Um, plows right into his driver's side, launching the car further up into the air and continuing to roll over where he finally landed. And the fact that he just got plowed right in his driver's side at 200 miles, 200 miles per hour, I mean, I understand that these cars are built with, like, these steel bars and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, they're, they're not designed to take a, a, a 202-mile-an-hour missile straight into the driver's side door. But, hey, whoever made that car, <laughs> go back and whoever manufactured that or did the work on that, they need... Not even just a hand. They need a hug. They need props because I cannot believe he he made that. He made that out alive. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just thinking about him and his family. um, A lot of people were saying it was very reminiscent to the uh, Dale Earnhardt crash. Uh, Just by, it was on the last lap. There was no word. They brought the black tarps out and the black screens, put them all around the car. And uh, it took forever to get him out of the car. So, you know, we're just brought back. There was a lot of flashbacks to uh, Dale Earnhardt's crash. Now, that was nine. Was that 19 years ago? No, not 19. 19 yep. Uh, was 19 it? 19 years ago today. Okay, yep, so today, think about years. it. I, I, this is what crossed my mind. Think about how it was the same yet different because yes like pretty much everything like physically was the same but think about 19 years ago we didn't have social media we didn't have i mean maybe we did but i don't think it was like maybe it was just the beginning no no we didn't like maybe we saw it on the news if we were watching the news but here uh-huh. it spread so f- within seconds people were talking about it and it spread all over and for someone who i don't really watch the race it was on my feed like instantly i watched a clip of it through somebody's twitter post probably not even 15 minutes after it like actually happened so the fact that it spread so fast is kind of mind-boggling to me yes i'm a millennial but well i was watching it and (laughs) Well, my my first reaction watching it live was, oh, my God, he's dead. Yeah. Um, when I saw them, you could actually see the driver's side of the car crumple when it got hit. And then when he was sliding along and the flames inside the, the cabin of the car, I was just, I was convinced. I thought for sure he was dead. Yeah. And then when they showed the car and the gas pouring out of the car and the car's on fire i'm like oh my god this car's gonna explode on live tv wow i didn't and, see that um, oh yeah when they showed the car come to a rest they did a close-up on it and you could see the fuel pouring out of the back and oh right god. next to it was the flame i can't even imagine and uh, it, it just absolutely blew my mind and the fact that it didn't explode um somebody was definitely looking out for him wow Wow. That's intense. Um, but yeah, hands down, one of the worst wrecks I've ever seen. Yeah. Even like on those, like, oh, I don't know if it was like True TV or Spike TV or whatever it was back then where they, they would show like the top 10, top 20 most horrible crashes and whatever those TV shows were. That was definitely by far the most horrific thing I've ever seen as it comes to a car crash, I should say. Wow. Because what cars are going 200 miles an hour yeah. on the highway? Right. You know what I mean? I mean, right. <laughs> Route 11? <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> not me. Not me. I'm terrified to drive that fast. But, yeah. No, no, I'm thinking know. about his family. Up. I want to give a uh, I want to give a shout out to the uh, all the volunteers, uh, the firefighters here in the town of Monville. 
and uh, surrounding towns. Um, we've had, today was our third working structure fire in the last few days. And uh, just like the one yesterday or the day before, I don't remember which day it was, um, fire department was on scene quick. They, uh, they got the fire knocked down and managed to save the bulk of the building. Nice. Uh, but it's just, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we can go long periods of time without seeing any major incidents in here. We've had three working fires within uh, not too long of each other. So hats off to you guys. Wish you could have been there. Good job, guys. Jim, That's what you got there. Um, what do I have? Um, I, I just, just, you know, just some abandoned ghost towns, you know, what do you got? <laughs> the flu. <I> mean. oh. <laughs> that Get sucks. It? Yeah, no, I got that. I mean, I didn't. But no, I, I, had the, <laughs> I had the shot. Damn it. I'm good. Yeah. Your mother said so. Yeah. You know, what's funny is my place of work, um, you know, where I work, you have to put like a, a notice to the parents if there's illness around so that they're aware that it's possible your child will get it, blah, blah, blah. Um, they put up a notice for me saying um, they didn't say it was me, but they posted a notice when I was out saying that influenza was um, in our wing. And I was like, I didn't have the sorry i'm getting well, distracted over here just go like that oh um I, I i um i didn't have that i just had neuro which is not the flu so just i wanted to clear that up just just no uh, but the neurovirus you wish you were dead because oh my god that's brutal that sucked and you had that I, that's what i had oh yeah. my god it's no sucked. i was just telling you to straighten out your hair oh i don't i it's you got like these headphones on and just the headphones had your hair bunched up like it was like sticking out like oh. that so mm. I'm, so, I'm sorry it's yeah. fine it's fine just making sure you look good on camera that's oh, all thanks um yeah so other than that um uh i lost my train of thought sorry <laughs> Ghost towns. Ghost towns, yes. Okay, so I guess maybe we'll start off with the most famous one in Connecticut because I know you have, I don't want to say links or ties, but you have done your research for various reasons on this town specifically. So, Dudley well, we Town. We go ahead and tell everybody that, um, yeah, I'm in the process of writing a movie about Dudley Town. And, um, there's some fiction, some nonfiction in the movie. Of course. Or I should say in the, in the script. Um, it is a scary enough story without having to add some stuff, but, but you got to add some stuff because you can't just have a movie based on Dudley Town. It would be boring as hell. Right. Anyway, in the 1700s, uh, I believe it was the late 1740s. Uh, <laughs> Don't, yeah, was, this was, is Wikipedia, though. Don't go off Wikipedia. <laughs> Why? Is it that bad? Wikipedia's bad. Wow. I go to Wikipedia anyway, for everything. Maybe that's why I'm always in wrong. The, in the mid to late 1700s, uh, Edmund Dudley, it was uh, during the uh, the reign of King Henry, I forgot which one, I want to say like the sixth. Um... Edmund Dudley was, he had his head chopped off for being a traitor to the crown. I don't really know what he did, uh, just that he was a traitor to the crown. Mm -hmm. um, from that point, all the members of the Dudley family uh, had a curse put on them. Don't know who put the curse on them, but there was a curse put on them. And um, they wanted to get the hell out of England, so Edmund's descendants, they all moved from the old world to the new world. Well, they brought the curse with them. So, now the way the curse worked is that all of the descendants of Dudley uh, would be surrounded by horror and death. Mm -hmm. 
So those who believe in the curse claim that the Dudley family began um, to experience a rather disturbing set of circumstances. Right. And that's where, you know, they come over here, they form the town. Um, Dudleys were farmers. And um, they named the town after themselves, Dudley Town. And they own the land. They allow people to come and live there. But that's when things went nuts. Um, crops started dying. And the people went nuts. Um, and there was uh, things such as madness, suicide, um, strange fatal accidents. Uh, people just vanishing and unexplained sightings. <clears throat> now, unexplained sightings means that they would see something that wasn't there, like an apparition um, or whatever. And the Dudley brothers both went insane. Um... It's just like lightning strikes. They would strike and kill people that were just sitting out on the porch. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, just all different kinds of strange phenomena would happen. And by 1800, everyone was killed. Or well, yeah. that wasn't a long time. <laughs> no, no. Um, well, by 1800 that whole group had died or vanished. Okay. All right. Other people decided to come and live there later on, and they had the same thing. Oh, um, so they, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize people try, like came in after the first, or I guess the original beeps. Yep. Yep. Um, one of the families that came in later, um, his wife died of tuberculosis, then all of his children disappeared, and when his house burnt down, he wandered into the woods and never came back. Interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's uh, reported that two women, Mary Cheney and Harriet, uh, I want to say her name is Clark. They went insane inside of Dudley Town and committed suicide. And Clark actually said she saw demons before she died. Oh. Um, there's believed to be a portal to hell somewhere That's on the Dudley Town. That's what I've heard, Town. too. That's definitely one of yep. the rumors that I've heard. Somewhere on the Dudley Town property. Um... It's, it's just really weird. Well, the, There's actually a ahead. reverend. Uh, it's a reverend. Reverend Gary Dudley. Yep. And he lives, he lives down in Texas. And he wrote a book, The Legend of Dudley Town, um, solving legends through genealogical and historical research. And it disputes all the accounts of this town. Yeah, However, that's what I've heard. There's no link to him being related to these Dudleys. Right. So one of oh. the one of the myths, I guess one of the one of the theories I read was like quote unquote debunked because they said that the Dudleys from England and the Dudleys here were not related, so that the supposed curse didn't apply to the family here in Connecticut. Um, no, that's false. The, the rumor is false, or England. that, or this story the is false. false. The the Dudleys here in Connecticut were direct descendants from the Dudleys in England. Okay. Now the Warrens. See, I don't know. I don't feel like anything is official until the Warrens touch it, and that's because I feel they were. I don't know. I just have so much. I don't even know. Admiration is definitely a word. I, I but, agree. Um, and they're I up mean, there. you know my connection. Yes. Yeah. 
You so, know my connection to Ed and Lorraine Warren. Right. Lorraine would not step foot in Dudley Town. Yeah, they declared it <laughs> demonically possessed. So whatever, while there may be no actual, like, reason for it, it doesn't matter. It's demonically possessed. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't need to know why. If it's demonically possessed, probably going to avoid that. No, you got to remember that Lorraine Warren has been in some of the most haunted and demonic places, not just in the country, but the world. In the world, yeah. You know, they've gone to England and done cases. They've they've been everywhere, and for her to not set place in there because of the evil in that town, um. It's definitely not worth going in. Right. And the very eerie, eerie thing when you go there, um, you drive down the road, and when you get to where the entrance to Dudley Town is, it's an eerie quiet. You I've don't heard hear that. bugs. You don't hear birds. It is just a dead silence that will will give you chills. Um. So maybe, I don't know if you, I'm not like looking to you as like a historian, but maybe you know um, these answers. But um, they did link, like, you know how you said some people went crazy or they died. Um, Was it because of um, contaminated water? I mean, obviously that would make sense if the crops weren't growing. Right. And, And that was a myth. But if you think about it, the other towns surrounding Dudley Town mm-hmm. would have also been infected by the contaminated water. Yeah. And they weren't. It was, it's only Dudley Town. So if, if the other towns like say Torrington or, or whatever up in that area. Isn't it part of, um, isn't it part of like Cornwall or? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's actually at the very, now are you, are you familiar with the Mohawk Trail? No, I'm not I'm the worst with geography. Ask anybody. Uh, the Mohawk Trail is beautiful. It goes right up through the uh, through the mountains into uh, Massachusetts, Vermont, and all of that. The tip of uh, the Mohawk Trail ends at Dudley Town. Okay. So that leads to the other speculation. Uh, one of the other rumors was that when the Dudleys came over here, they made a deal with the local Indian tribe. Oh, and here's where I'm, things I get believe, busy. <laughs> I believe it was the Mohawks. And when it came time to secure their end of the deal, the Dudleys basically reneged on the deal and screwed over the Mohawks. Okay. So then the the other legend is that it was the Native Americans that put the curse on the Dudleys. Uh, You know, I could believe that. I think more... Well... That's just me. Let me... As a Native American, Mm -hmm. and I I, I can speak for my tribe, but I can't speak for all the tribe, but we don't put curses on people. Really? That's not... Yeah, it's not... I mean, it's just not something that's well, fun. Then, what about Indian burial grounds, though? Because that, about, I heard, is something you do not mess with. This is true. So, I just kind of, I think of, that's where my mind goes to. It, it's hard to say. When you take a look at this area right here. This entire area mm-hmm. is a Native American burial ground. Yeah, true. So, you know, it's hard to say. Yeah. It's hard to say. And when they had those those settlements back in the, the mid-1700s, I mean, you were digging deep foundations and everything back then. So it would have been hard to... To really tell, um, but if you do, if you go down the Shantock, you can see the old little stones from where tribal members are buried, 
and I mean they're just tiny little stones, but you know that they're they're headstones marking where somebody was buried. And um, whether or not there was any of them, I have no idea. So, aside from going to where the, I guess where you would drive to and in, in and start going into Dudley Town, have you actually been inside Dudley Town? Uh, no, absolutely okay. not. Okay, and that's not something you're willing yeah. to do, or just you just um, want to see it. At, like, what, what was? We. Uh... We got there from the Appalachian Trail. We took a. We went into a state forest. You and both did together. No, me oh, and a, okay, me and okay. me and a few other people were in there, and we got in there through an Appalachian Trail. Yeah, that was the Mo- that was the Mohawk Trail. The Mohawk Trail, yeah. And uh, it took um, us took us at least three hours to get out there, but it was it was interesting. It was scary too. I mean, the place is uh, it's surrounded by three mountains. So, oh, so it's you're like in there. <laughs> even on the brightest day, it is uh, it's eerily dark, shadowy in there. Hmm. And so it's a lot of um, a lot of foundations. So you've actually been but, in it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to admit it too much. Uh, to all of a sudden, I'll get a visit from the state police. The, the police out there are very uh, vigilant about uh, keeping people out of that property. Yeah. But yeah. if if you happen to wander off the trail, and uh, end up in there, then that that's you know that's what we did. We didn't like go into an area that was it didn't there was no no trespassing signs. We just wandered through the woods and made our way in there. Mm, interesting. And there's no cell phone service whatsoever. Well, isn't that just? I kept, Great, Dandy. I kept this on me just in case, you know. I, I, ham, when all else fails, ham radio comes through. It's like the start of a actual movie, Jim. No cell phone service. <laughs> oh yeah, there's nothing in there. Um, I did come across a newspaper clipping. It's it, it's an older one, so it's really hard to to reach. Mm-hmm. Um. There is a a comment on here. There's absolutely no question that Dudley Town was destroyed by the Dudley Curse, said world-famous psychic researcher Ed Warren. Um, The great-grandson, William Dudley, came to America in 1630, approximately 100 years. Later, four of his descendants founded Dudley Town by... By 1800, Dudley Town was a bustling community of several hundred people, boasting two schools, a church, a general store, and a blacksmith shop. But even as the village grew, the Dudley curse was already making its deadly toll. In 1774, six members of the Carter family who had settled in Dudley Town all died from cholera. Cholera. Oh. (laughs) About the... I told you it's hard to read. About the same time... Abzeel Dudley, oldest of the four founding brothers, went mad, raving that he saw weird animals with red eyes and terrifying green creatures. Green creatures. He he remained insane until his death. Interesting. Uh, In 1792, a Dudley Town resident, Gershon Hollister, was found brutally murdered at the home of William Tanner, who was also babbling insanely about demonic creatures. He remained insane until he died. William Tanner. That sounds like one of the names from, like, The Crucible. I also read uh, online here that um, Dudley Town was uh, pretty far from a a drinkable water source, and they had a hard time planting uh, any type of uh, crops on the land, that the soil wasn't suitable. Not really sure about that. They're right there. They have a water source right there. Uh, but that leads to the water contamination. But, um, again, that was, uh, it would have affected the surrounding towns like Cornwall and all of those areas, too. So, right. Yeah. Dawn, time I for really a hike, Sarah. <laughs> You're not going to catch me there. 
Time for a hike. Catch me outside, <laughs> Dudley. Down. Let's go, Don. <laughs> oh, I knew that catch me outside was coming. Uh, <laughs> we we had to use to to get in there to find it. We had to actually go on a map and mark the actual GPS coordinates of the trail where the town was next to it. We had to do all kinds of stuff with GPS to find our way in there. It's the only thing that worked. I'm, I'm surprised GPS signals made it into that place because even the, even the GPS was reporting poor signal. Ooh, that's sketchy. Yeah. Um, for those watching, um, I don't know what you guys believe or not believe, but if you have any comments on that you know let me know let us just know <laughs> um are there any other before i mean i don't know how long you plan on being on here you can stay on here the whole show if you want but um yeah, i'll see how long i can <laughs> <laughs> but don as long as he brings his ham radio you're all set yeah right yeah satellite phone um is there? I mean, I have a couple towns locally in Connecticut, um, and it's debatable whether I, whether they're abandoned ghost towns, I guess. But um, but also some one more famous one, um, Roanoke Island in North Carolina. Um, um, did you? Do you? I don't know if any of you guys watch American Horror Story, but they actually did one season on. Roanoke Island, and I never heard of this until the show. So I kind of did I some research seen it onto yet, it. But that was pretty good. Yeah, I think this was like probably maybe three seasons ago, um, two or three seasons ago. But there's so many theories about um, what happened because these people just disappeared and nobody knows what happened to them. Um, and this had to do with, um, I don't know if I want to jump right into eighth. You headed for the Croatonin? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I am on, I tried there's one article that I was not allowed to read because I am not a National Geographic subscriber, but I did try to find like legitimate sources like history and National Geographic um, and all that stuff. But um, there was a, about 115 English settlers arrived on Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina. I'm not sure what it was back then, but... Um, it was North Carolina. It, well, yeah, but... <laughs> Um, was it North Carolina, though? <laughs> um, so later that year, it was decided that John White, governor of the new colony, would sail back to England in order to gather a fresh load of supplies to bring back. Um, as he arrived, a major naval war broke out between England and Spain, and Queen Elizabeth I called on every available ship to confront the Spanish Armada. So... In August of 1590, White finally returned to Roanoke, where he had left his wife, his daughter, his grandchildren, um, and other settlers three years before. So it took him three years to get back, and he found no trace of the colony um, and only a few clues of what happened, um, like Croatoan carved into a wooden post was one of the only things that remained um so it's been a mystery since what happened um and so many people um have their theories about what has happened since then so definitely crazy to me um they don't so know. The so one of them is that they were killed or abducted by Native Americans. Um, one is that they tried to sail back to England on their own and got lost at sea. Um, or that they um, met at the hands of Spaniards who marched up from Florida. 
or that they moved further inland and got absorbed with other tribes or other local people. But in 2007, efforts began to collect and analyze DNA from local families to figure out if they were related to the Roanoke settlers, um, local Native American tribes, or both. Dawn says Josh uh, Gates did one of his shows on it. Um, who's Josh Gates? I feel like that sounds so familiar. Is that Ashley, one of the haunted people? Ashley says we learned about the Renoke in school. They, to this day, aren't positive, but there are some several theories. Yes. Roanoke. 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 Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so I did find an article about eight theories. So I'm going to scroll down and find them. Meanwhile, we should all go check out Route 11. We've already been through this. <laughs> I want to go there so bad. If you look on your screen, Route 11 is off of 82 in Salem, and it just comes to an abrupt end. But there's no fancy story behind this. It's just that... It's the highway to nowhere. It's the highway to nowhere because it was supposed to be a highway that was to connect Route 2 to 95, right? Right. And then... People just decided we don't want to fund this anymore. We don't want this going through our neighborhood anymore. So it just kind of stops. Right uh, where, what's the ice cream place? Uh, it's Salem right here on the map. Valley Farm. Silly Valley Farm yeah. is right here on the map. Yep. So I don't think it's, I mean. It's just interesting a highway that goes nowhere. It just. Yeah. It's fascinating. Plus, I was told there's a lot of uh, quartz crystals and interesting minerals there. That oh. Um, I know Gwen. I don't think she's watching right now, but she did say that she has hiked it, and it's pretty cool. So I want to check it out. Well, we'll check it out. We'll go. Um, so, all right. I guess, again, one of the um, theories is that the colonists were absorbed into local Indian populations or captured as slaves. So it's the most popular theory um, that they sought shelter with the other Indian tribes. Because, I mean, I don't know. When I read stories about these things, three years is a long time to be like, oh, I wonder if he's coming back. I mean, if your significant other's gone and you haven't heard from them in three days, you think they're dead. <laughs> so I just, I just, side note, think that that's crazy that, I'll be back going on a trek. Be back in three years. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I um, think of Ace Ventura when he says, if I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> yeah. That was a good movie. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, the, the, the tribes you're talking about, um, in 1607, men from, the, men from the Jamestown settlement, which was up in Virginia, mm-hmm. made they made contact with the Powhatan tribe in hopes of acquiring information on the disappearance of the Roanoke colony. Powhatan claimed he had killed the colonists after they'd begun living with a tribe the Powhatans hated, the Chesapeans. There is no solid evidence of this claim through archaeology or DNA. Because of the lack of evidence, many people believe Powhatan told this story to scare the settlers. Randy. <laughs> Are you disappointed that's not Jim? <laughs> hey, Ra- Randy's the guy with the snacks. Yeah. I think. The snack guy. Well, at Lansdowne, right? Snack guy. He no, talking about Randy's the head chef at yeah. Randy's the head chef at Lansdowne. No, that's not me, Randy. I'm sick. Um, so in 1696, um, French, I can't pronounce this last name, Huguenots left records of meeting blonde haired, blue eyed Indians soon after their arrival along Tar, Tar River. In 1709, John Lawson, in his book, A Voyage to Carolina, records Croatoans living on Croatoan Island who claim that they used to live on Roanoke Island and they claim to have white ancestors. So that's part of why they believe they were absorbed into local Indian populations. Um, oh, I hate Let's these say ones. adopted instead of absorbed. <laughs> Did I say adopted? 
I think no, I so. said let's say adopted instead of absorbed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the word Croatoan was found carved into a fence post, which I already mentioned. Um, why they so obviously why was it found? It's also connected with other mysterious happenings over centuries, each one more puzzling than the last. Um, something about right before he died, Edgar Allan Poe disappeared for a short time. Um, and when he was seen again, he was delirious in his final state of delirium before his death. Allegedly, one of the last words that he said was Croatoan. So, um, that's just a side note. I guess the word also appeared, um, at several other famous disappearances in the 19th century and 20th centuries. Um... Stagecoach robber Black Bart carved the word into the wall of his cell before he was released from prison. I feel like this might be like the olden day Illuminati or something. <laughs> um, it was found in Amelia Earhart's journal after she disappeared in 1937. Um, the last bed that horror writer Ambrose Beer slept in before he disappeared in Mexico in 1913 also had the word Croatoan carved into one of his posts. Um, in 1921, Croatoan was written on the last page of the logbook of the ship Carol A. Deering when it crashed on Cape Hatteras near Croatoan Island. But do, like, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> um... Another theory was that they were all murdered. Um, like you said, Chief Powhatan told them he killed all the people of the colony to retaliate against them for living with another tribe that refused to ally with them. I think that's what you touched upon earlier. Now, I'm not saying I believe any of these. I'm just saying what the theories are, and you can just tell me which ones you guys think you agree with cannibalism that's one so either the people of roanoke were the victims of cannibals or they had to resort to it to stay alive and actually american horror story actually i think touches upon that a little bit um they think that they somebody getting beat up Be yeah i know what was that noise that's my that's my phone that's a star trek chirp oh uh, yeah well that's someone why he said is someone getting beamed up yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, they think that they were slowly getting picked off. Um, the fact that no bodies were found sounds like a time consuming endeavor. Um, if cannibals attacked the settlers, they had more than enough time to dispose of all the bodies. Yummy. <laughs> I'm going to go with they were adapted into the tribe. Yeah. Uh, there's four more theories though. So disease is another theory. Um... The Roanoke colonists could have encountered a new world disease that they had no immunity to fight, which, I mean, I could see that being a possibility coming f to a new land. Um, but I still feel like there would be evidence of that. Right? Am I crazy? I mean, there should be. Um, what's this other theory? Witchcraft. And I believe that American... I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure American Horror Story touched upon that. So there's two theories involving witchcraft. The Croatoan either executed the colonists as witches, or the colonists were the victims of witches who lived in the North Carolina woods. The Croatoans believed in witches and witchcraft. Their definition of witches were people who used black magic to commit evil acts in everyday life. Um... There's no evidence that Croatoan executed witches or that they accused people of Roanoke of witchcraft, but they were known for condemning dangerous outsiders. So, witchcraft is another one. Supernatural religious explanations is another theory. Um, obviously, there's no scientific basis for those theories, but they're still taken very seriously because, as you know, with Native Americans, they obviously have their beliefs of um, 
certain things. Um, you know, um, mainly revolving around Native American spirits. So they might think spirits had something to do with it. Um, Native Americans believe in a wild spirit in the form of a beast called Wendigo. And you can tell me if I just butchered that one. <laughs> I don't know how you say that one. I don't know, Jim. Do you have any ideas? Is it Wendigo? The, win, the Wendigo? Wendigo? Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah no, I, don't, I don't think the Wendigo killed him. So they said when people resort to... That's, I guess, that eats human flesh, right? Um, when people resort to eating human flesh, as in the case yeah. of cannibalism, their bodies are taken over by a Wendigo, if I said that right. I don't know. Um, but... If they resorted to cannibalism, then that would um, go into that theory as well. So it's kind of like two theories mixing into one. Um, the Croton belief system includes a spirit on the island that had a power to absorb um, humans into the landscape. If the spirit was offered or angered, it would turn people into trees, animals, stones, or any other part of the land. Which, <laughs> I mean... I don't know what you want to believe, but that is a cool theory. I never knew. I, you know, I like that theory. That's my favorite one so far. Um, the Croatoan also believed in the reptilian devil of the woods, an evil spirit that could attach itself to people. The spirit made people violent, greedy, and paranoid. The Croatoan believed that the reptilian spirit had possessed the settlers once they started to turn on each other after White left for England to retrieve more supplies. I don't know. I still like the, uh, the island spirit. So. Well, do you know about the stones? Oh, well, so that's the dare stones? Yeah. That's well, the last theory. Several of them. Yep. And they were authenticated. Interesting. And it said that it said that uh, due to war and starvation. Hmm. Um, so it, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, the other side, one of the stones um, reported that only seven of the Roanoke colonists were left alive and the Native Americans murdered the rest. And it was signed well, EWD Eleanor White Dare. Now, Emory College, um, which is a very, very well renowned college, mm -hmm. deciphered the message and they were shocked to discover that the story it told. Described two years of suffering due to sickness and war with the local Native Americans that led to the death of virtually all of the colony settlers. Mm -hmm. So, um, then again, in 2016, I want to say, or 2006, um, it was, uh, 2016, it was, uh, once again, uh, they brought it to the university in North Carolina, and they, the doctors there said the inscription on the stone was much darker in color. Such darkening takes a very long time to occur, suggesting that the inscription was made in the approximate era of the Roanoke College. Yeah. Um, so... There were, I think, 40, 48 stones total or something like that. But I think they, um, a lot of them were exposed as forgeries. But um, there were, in 2015, a historic um, History Channel documentary detailed the study of the stones by archaeologists who found that the first stone was authentic, but the others were hoaxes. So, at least there's one. Well, yeah, but then they... Uh they brought the other stones to um, North Carolina and that's where they determined that no, it wasn't a hoax. That all of the stones were authentic. Oh. Interesting. It wasn't, it wasn't that many stones. It was only a few. Interesting. Yep. So, I mean, I guess, do I want to go with facts and science or do I want to go with the theory that they were absorbed by the island? I like that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm going to go with the facts and science and say that... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> disease, starvation, and the natives killed them. I, you know, I all of them could be true. All of yeah, them. Absolutely. Minus the, the spirit... I mean, I don't know, maybe they got absorbed by the island after they died of being murdered and diseased and... Yeah, the Wendigo didn't kill him. I can, I can, I can tell you that. So, well, okay. So, while we're talking about that, do you know about that? Because I've never heard of that before. You can elaborate on that. Are you kidding me? No. What? What is this? It's, o- its own other. show by itself. That would take a whole nother show. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to do that show then because I'm, I'm intrigued. And we can. I mean, would that go under like? Um, my little mythical creatures episode <laughs> no yes i don't know i don't know yeah. i don't know anything about this so it's fascinating it's almost though. like it's almost like a werewolf but it's got antlers okay so this would go under that episode it's jim when he wakes up in the morning Ooh. <laughs> oh, i'm sorry keep talking <laughs> basically, basically um it's a man-eating creature, or it's it's either that or an evil spirit. Okay. Uh, from the first from the Al, from the Algonquin tribes, which being is part of the Algonquin tribes, um, it's based in the started in the northern forests of Nova Scotia, the east coast of Canada, Great Lakes region, and on the way down. Okay. Um, it's described as. It's got the characteristics of a human, um, or as a spirit who possessed a human, and then made them turn them into a monster, kind of like a werewolf. Um, its influence is it basically invokes murder, insatiable greed, cannibalism, and cultural taboos against such behaviors. Um, there is a, a an actual medical term for it. I don't know if you knew this or not. No. But there's there's something called it's it's called Wendigo psychosis. No, did not know this. Yeah. It's a big word. Yeah. Wendigo yeah, psychosis. Wendigo psychosis, and it's basically when somebody's craving human flesh or the fear of becoming a cannibal. Um. Yeah. The fear of becoming a cannibal. Interesting. Yep. And in some Native American communities, um, environmental destruction, insatiable greed, they're also considered a manifestation of Wendigo psychosis. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, that's all I got on... Roanoke, but um, I there are apparently some abandoned towns in Connecticut, and I don't think all of them are necessarily are um, hauntings. But um, I'm sure you guys know of Gay City State Park. Um, I've heard of it. It's in Hebron and Bolton, because I think it it borders on both of them. But this one doesn't have a crazy story like these other two or any theories. It just was a town. It was like a mill town. Um, And a lot of these mills ended up burning down in, I believe, 1800 was the first one and then the last one burned down in 1879 and it was like a mill town family place so the workers and their families lived in this town and after the last one burned down um it was pretty much the demise the property was sold to the state Um, by one of the town's last descendants in 1943 at which the um, the name was Gay City when they sold it 
Um, a year later, the land became a state park, and then Connecticut stepped in, um, you know, making it a state park. So, actually, I've been there. Um, a friend of mine did a photo shoot there, and I kind of just wanted to go on a hike with them. And there's just remnants of the mills. Um, just foundations and stuff. It's nothing creepy or anything. But there's ponds. I don't know if there's multiple ponds. There is a pond. Um, you can swim, picnic. There's like a campground. There's trails, hiking, cycling, all that stuff. Um, and it connects to Black Ledge Falls in Glastonbury through um, the Mesa... I can't even say that state forest name. <laughs> but um, that's definitely, it started off as a town and now it's a state park. Hi, Jane. Um, another one that's very cool to me, because it is nearby to me as well, is Johnsonville Village. Have you heard of that? I haven't. That one I have not heard of. Really? Okay, so yeah. it's just basically this town that's been like, um, like been up for sale because people don't want to buy it anymore. But um, it was like this Victorian town, I guess, and it kind of just fell apart. Um, in 1832, the Neptune Mill was constructed beside a dam just north of the Salmon River Cove. Um, the card company, as it was then known, began making stocking yarn and carpet warp. Um, new cord wrapping machines filled these mills, and twine was produced on a massive scale. Over the years, the Neptune Mill expanded until it reached um, 100 by 100 feet dimensions. Um, in 1862, Emory Johnson built the Triton Mill at the northern end of the mill pond. Tenants and worker housing soon cropped up, ensuing the years, kind of like Gay City, where all these houses would supply, or they would supply the houses for the family so that they could work there. Um, so that is when Johnsonville was born, because all these families were coming in after these mills were be, um, getting built up and built up. Um, the Triton Mill was destroyed in a fire in 1924. Um... And so a lot of stuff had burned down. And it became a tourist attraction in 1965. Raymond Sch um, Schmidt, um, he was the owner of AGC Corporation, an aerospace equipment manufacturer. And he bought the Neptune Mill from the Johnson family. He also purchased other vintage village and had them move to Johnsonville, including a Victorian stable and chapel, which hosted weddings. So it became this place where you could just have parties, weddings, all that stuff. Um, he brought a stern wheeler, I don't know what that is, to Johnsonville in 1966 for many years. Oh, it's a boat. Um, it was reported to be the American from the Freedom Land USA theme park in New York City. That was proven to be an error, but... A lot debated back then. Um, he had towed it up the Connecticut River and carried it by truck to Moodis, where it would sit in the Johnson Mill Pond for more than 30 years. Wow. In 1972, the Neptune Mill was struck by lightning and burned to the ground. <laughs> um, in 1993, Billy Joel filmed part of River of Dreams music video at this village, which is in Connecticut and close by, and I think that's very cool. Um, so when it became a ghost town was in 1994, um, Schmidt got into a disagreement with the local zoning officials and shut down the attraction, putting the property up for sale. He died in 98. His estate sold it. Um, a hotel developer bought the 64-acre property in 2001. In 2004, they filed plans for a mixed-use development of the site. That included 133 upscale single-family houses and townhouses, all built in Victorian style with an age restriction for owners, which is interesting, <laughs> um, and keeping and restoring most of the original dozen or so buildings. That proposal fell apart, 
and this is why I'm surprised you guys didn't know about this because this has been in the news a lot um, since like 2001 because it kept going up for sale not for sale up for sale not for sale um, as of April 2013 another realtor had listed the village for under three million and um, the village has now fallen in disrepair was featured on an episode of National Geographic's TV series Abandoned. The village went up for sale again in 2014. Winning bid was $1.9 million. That deal fell through. In 2017, it was up for sale again, and a Christian organization bought the village for $1.85 million. So that's why I'm surprised you guys didn't hear about that. Did you ever hear of uh, Gunji Womp? No. It's right over in Groton. They have these... Um, Is it a town? It's... it's uh, No, it's not a town, but it's got these Actually, caverns and stuff that are ancient. And caverns? They, like like, like little Like little caves. Hmm. And they uh, have slits in them in the walls that align with the equinox, with the uh, summer equinox. And oh. every every year, the... The light passes to a certain point of the of the uh, cave, or the little. Interesting. You have to pull it up when you get a chance. It's called Gunji Womp. Gunji Womp. It's, it's so fascinating. I want to go there, I but I can't. We went exploring the area. You, you have to get a tour. There's a. Oh, you um, can't just go. Well, private. It's intimidating because we went out there looking around for paths, or there's like a little like park, a public land area, Mm -hmm. but there's no like visible walkways or paths. It's just a lot of woods, and one of the roads, uh, Gunji Womp Road, at the beginning of the road is supposed to be a public road. There are more no trespassing signs than you could pick up any all the rocks on the ground and throw them at. Hmm. I mean, this place. When did you go? When did you last go? Uh, we went just a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. we're, we so were exploring. <laughs> we were exploring the area for entry. Okay. And um, there's no. I, I went looking online for. Um, there's there's this forum where uh, urban explorers uh, give up uh, GPS coordinates for entry points uh, for the areas of interest. They have all the GPS coordinates, and you just put it in your phone and make your way through the woods. That any point that doesn't have a no trespassing sign, and you make your way in and you, you go see what's what's going on, but. This place has no coordinates, no vectors, nothing to indicate how you would get to the stone structures. Hmm. So it's and and the two research on the two roads that lead into it are peppered, peppered with no trespassing signs. A public road that you can't go up. It's just peppered with no trespassing. Okay, so here was here's what I would do. I'd go down that road, and if somebody said it's something, I'd be like, I thought this was a public road. Yeah, well, it has a street sign and everything. There's a street like it sign. It doesn't say like private road. No, it's because I've seen no trespassing. Ah, oh, that's, that's so confusing. Like more. I would than look the- up the road and be like, "Is this public?" It is. It is a public road. Um, um, I'll pull it up real quick. I next time you go, I want to go. I want to go. That's we can cool. just take a drive over there. I'll show you right now. How close is that? But it's raining. It's uh well you're not gonna get out and go anywhere in the woods this time it's kind of late True, but exactly um it is uh about ten fifteen minute drive from here okay. it's right over in Groton over over I'll, I'll show right on the, the map bridge. real quick interesting and there's no is like you say it's caverns and stuff is there like a history behind it or? yeah oh yeah they they say it goes back to ancient times. The settlers used the uh, caves for uh, storing uh, food and stuff, oh but it goes back way before the settlers, way before the Indians. The front door. Oh, there's <laughs> someone at the front door. Oh, well. Do you ever see the show on Netflix? Oh, what the heck is it called? It kind of reminds me of Stranger Things. What show? 
it's it kind of reminds me of Stranger Things, but it has to do with these caves being like a portal to like these years, thirty three years. It's like a time jump. Whenever you go through this, it's either thirty three years in the future, thirty three years in the past, but it's always thirty three years, and I can't remember the name of it. But it the beginning of it definitely reminded me of Stranger Things. But you talking about the caves going back in time like that definitely reminds me of that show. It's called, uh, you go on Gunjiwamp Road and you come up to this road called North Gunjiwamp Road. And at the entrance of that road, it is peppered with no trespassing signs. Hmm. And then there's also a sign that says no access to stone structures. They don't want. They don't want people. It's such. If you pull up Gunjiwamp, Groton, Connecticut, you'll see what I'm talking about. And the, the place has got massive history. Jim, do you know anything about it? So maybe there's an alternate. I, I know a little bit about the caves. That's about it. Maybe there's an alternate entrance somewhere then. That's what I'm trying to find. Yeah. I'm thinking about even flying my drone over the area just to get an aerial, oh. an aerial shot to see, you know, what's what now. There's apparently there's a cliff that overlooks a pond, which is um, whoops I'm on the wrong there's screen. There's a pond on the left. Uh, Lathrin Reservoir or something like that. Lathrin Lathrin Reservoir. There's a there's a an area of rocks that overlooks it, and that gives me a general idea of where to go. I mean, cell phone service and GPS both work, because I tested. And that stuff works there. So I'd be able to (laughs) blindly, you'd have to bushwhack to get to this. Because, again, you'd have to enter the woods in an area that doesn't have no trespassing signs. This is the time I would go in the woods because I have a very big phobia of ticks. Oh, you just have someone check you out afterwards. No, no, no. (laughs) It's got to be cold enough where they're just not out. But no, I want to go see this. I, I will. We should do like our own little mini thing. thing is we you'd go have exploring. To, you'd have to search around the area. I mean, there's a um, on Google Maps. It shows a park, a little park. It's, but there's no, there's no like benches. There's no picnic tables. It just shows an area of green. You know, the green areas on the map yeah. that show parks and stuff. Uh, and you can't look up the park like. It doesn't say, like, the name of the park. Let me move around here in the map a little bit. Center, Groton Park. I'm just looking at your map. See, on Long Cove Road, there's another, there's an uh, unnamed road, a no-name road that goes up into those woods. So that might be the private, uh, a private road you can't that's, go on. Yeah, that's, that's a road that says private. But this North Gunjiwamp Road, like I said, at the beginning of it, there's a, a I, I but my, my friend wasn't brave enough just to go drive up the road. He, I'm like, it's a public road, just go up. He's like, no, there's too many no trespassing signs. This guy's, are, he's, uh, you know, he's retired military and never gotten, you know a, he's never even road. gotten a ticket. How do you know it's a public road, though? Like, can you look that up? Is that something you can be like, is this a public road? It says North Gunjiwamp Road on it, so I don't understand if it's if it's a public road, why they would pepper it with no trespassing signs. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying I know that the name of the road is on the map, but do you, how do you, just because it's on the map doesn't mean that it's public. Right. I don't know. Right? That's what I'm getting at. Like, is it, I don't know. I You have me intrigued. Now, <laughs> I'm going to go exploring. I have all the information saved depends, my GPS. It all depends what's on the other end of it. You know what? It's a dead Jim, end. I don't need that negativity. It's a dead end. Well, it's like Millstone. The road going up to Millstone has a name on it, but it's still no trespassing. You know what I mean? Oh, right. I thought you meant like what sinister things lie behind. <laughs> I, no. I, I'm going to jump ahead 33 years. That's what's going to happen. Hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. So... I mean, there's other, if you want to look, I know we don't have time to talk about them, but um, there's other little things called Little Danbury in Connecticut, Pleasure Beach in Connecticut. Obviously, we talked about Dudley Town, Barra Hack, Connecticut. Um, these are definitely things I did not know existed until I just decided to 
You know when you're Googling something at like 1 a.m. in the morning and you just kind of spiral down this list of this hole of, uh, I don't know. I found myself Googling the Hindenburg at 3 a.m. one morning. So that's just like the holes I get down. So all of these towns came to a surprise to me at 3 a.m. some morning, I'm sure. Well, maybe we'll uh, we'll continue with them next week. Yeah, I, they're not any. The, I I think I said the more interesting ones. Johnsonville, I think was, and Johnson, it still sits there. It's just this town that nobody's doing anything with. They keep making plans to do something with it, yet they don't. Unlike um, Gay City, where they made it into a state park. Like at some point, I still think the venue thing that they had going on was pretty cool in Johnsonville, but I don't know. I still think you could make money. It's East Haddam. Very uppity Lottie Daw town on the water. You know? Absolutely. So, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Do you have uh, an idea for next week or are we just gonna, are we gonna pull Pull our peeps. You guys should definitely do an investigative piece on Gunjuwap because it's right here. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live here, so I mean. Uh, yeah, he's like, I need to make it to tomorrow before I think about this next show. <laughs> <laughs> let's just uh, let's see if I wake up tomorrow. Then we'll talk about it. <laughs> we can we can send Keith on assignment and have him go take some pictures from Gunjuwap and. I'm, I'm coming too. It next week. Let's be real. Like, what's this week? Hold on. What is my calendar? What are you doing this weekend? All right, fam. That's what we're doing. Meet up at Gun. <laughs> is it Gunji Swamp? Gunji Womp? Gunji Womp. Gunji Womp. <laughs> All right, that's our plans this weekend. We're going to Gunji Womp. Figure Word. this out. So, all right. Well, thanks for calling in and not abandoning me. I appreciate that. <laughs> I told you I wouldn't abandon you. <laughs> and I hope you feel better. Um, Thanks, guys. Awesome, awesome show, guys. You did good. Oh, Thank you. Thanks. We tried. <laughs> you kept you kept Keith's picture off camera as much as possible. I'm hey, the one controlling the video. Him. That was him. <laughs> I know. So he's got to bust my right. ass. Mm. I'll talk to you guys by next week. All right. See you, Jim. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Um, once again, if you didn't catch it the first three times we tried to mention it, sponsored by Lansdowne, go get your yummy food there. I'm not going to put on my ad voice like Jim does. Um, I honestly thought he read from a script. Clearly, that's all in his head. But go to Lansdowne, go to Mohegan, have a ball. I'm pretty sure that's Foxwood slogan, but, um... Yeah, thanks for watching, and go to our Facebook page and um, comment if there's anything you guys want to talk about, and I do have a special guest in my line. I'm in works with uh, a very interesting story. I will definitely post more about it when I get a little more details, um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Tuesday night. Okay, everybody. That's it for now. Peace. See ya.